overall, Let it rip. overall coach, how would you assess this first day with everyone, having everyone on the field together? Yeah, it was great. It was great. Get to actually go up against a defense and, you know, the first time really all off season. Yesterday was the first day, but today is the second day of actual practice versus each other, um, which we're all learning how to practice against each other. And there's a lot of things that, that go into that. Uh, technique is easy on air. Uh, it's easy when you're working against the, you know, coaches. Um, but when you get against a defense, everything sort of changes. So it's always good to start that process again. What have you learned about your team? You talked a lot about you know, the times we've talked to you about finding out what guys can take what you learn in the classroom with that technique and apply it. In a short time, what have you learned about the team? Uh, we got a team that really works very hard. Um, that part is, is great. Um, they put in excellent work. They study hard. They work hard in the meeting room. They work hard on the field. Um, as the days go by, as we play against the defense, we keep learning more about how guys react, what they see, how, what they understand, uh, really on, on all three phases, uh, which is important. And then it, the, the, the next step is in training camp when you get a chance to put pads on, and that's when football really comes alive and you really find out about what your team's made of. So um, it's an ongoing process. You know, we're learning kind of every day. I, I come out here, I learn about guys, um, and they're learning as well. So it's, it's sort of an ongoing process that'll go all the way through training camp and generally it happens into the season as well. When you go through, and you, one of the things that you talked about when you got the job was finding out how the guys that you inherited from a different offensive system and a different defensive system would fit. How are some of those guys fitting, and how is that challenge going? Oh, they, they've been great. I mean, I think we got good football players, um, and those guys tend to fit in every system. Uh, I think, as I've said before, that – uh, they have they have the ability to do really whatever you, you ask of them and you find out what they're most comfortable with and um, the things they can execute at the fastest speed and the highest tempo and uh, you keep going from there but uh, all the guys that, I mean the team that we have here I'm, I'm excited about I got a lot of confidence in what they've put the work they've put in and and where we're at right now and again it's a it's a long process till September and um, you know we got a lot of work to do still but I uh, feel good about where we what work we've put in so far some of the guys who are not out there. Uh, on property, maybe rehabbing or something inside, yeah. or they're not. Here? Oh yeah, no. There's guys rehabbing. There's plenty of guys that, uh, because we you know we don't have to put on injury report in the spring. Um, there's guys that have cleanup surgeries. There's things that they have done in the, in the off season process that they're rehabbing, returning to play. That stuff's all normal procedure for us. And uh, the guys that have any nicks and uh, nicks and bruises from from the process of, of even the phase one through phase two. Um, if you pull a hamstring, and you're you're part of the part of the rehab process as well. So again, those things don't get reported um, because we don't have to. But there's a lot of there's plenty of guys that are in return to play protocols, and guys that um, you know are on a on a day or two or a week of of uh, of rehab process. So who's physically on property versus who's not here? No, I'll let you guys figure that out. Tyler, well, I know it's early for him, but what's the process like in getting him yeah. up to speed and, and with the program? Well, he's ahead of the game because he knows a lot of the system. But you know, as, as him and I talked this morning, there's there's quite a bit of things that just change over uh, any time you transition a system. Things that might not make sense, uh, words, formations. As you get with other people, they they ask questions about stuff. And again, we've been in the same system for five years, so it's grown. Um, and so there's a handful of things that change that, that he's got to get up to speed on. But um, as far as getting lined up and, and having a pretty good idea of, of where to go and what to do, uh, he's pretty pretty on top of it. So there's a there's a bonus there and a comfort level for him that he knows um, the bones, at least, of, of the offensive system. How much kind of is it kind of just getting down, hitting the ground, running because of familiarity? Yeah, there's a lot of that. I mean, I think he's he's – Definitely got an advantage in, over over any normal free agent, you know. Even like Calvin, Calvin's got a lot of things he's got to learn, um, but but Tyler has the advantage because he's been in quite a bit of, of the offense in terms of names, expectation, route detail, the coaching points that he's heard for five years um, that that he's got a pretty natural feel for. And he, he's getting back used to it again too. You know, he's all these guys as they come back in, um, they knock some rust off as well. So that's part of the process. I know you weren't here last year, but I'm wondering, uh, Peter Skronsky, is there been a goal or, or a focus that may, you know, adding a little weight, adding a little muscle to him, you know, just to make it out, he looks a little bit. Yeah, he's put in some really good work. I think he looks great physically. Um, he looks like he's supposed to look. I think uh, probably got a little bit lighter because of the, the appendectomy I think he had. It probably contributed to some of that, but um, he looks like uh, – what what guards are supposed to look like? He looks. He's put a lot of really good work in. I'm I'm pleased with his progress. What does he stand to gain with Latham and Kirsten Berry sandwiching him there? Well, I think you, you you have a veteran center, which always helps. 
um, to be able to get things lined up the way you need them. You got three really pretty powerful people uh, on the same side, and so that makes some of those combinations um, easier, uh, and it's easier to move people when you got strength on strength on both sides. Um, so I think he, he stands to benefit uh, from the power that those guys have and then from the, the savviness and veteranness that Lloyd's got. Um, and then he's going to have to help uh, J.C. as well because J.C. is his first time you know, playing NFL tackle, and so he's got a learning curve too. So that part, uh, all three of those guys will, will benefit. They will all benefit um, from playing with each other, I think, on both sides, um, both J.C. and Peter with Lloyd on that left side. Any kind of impression on D. Frayer yet? <laughs> yeah, he's been great. Um, really been pleased with his progress. He um, he's one of those rehab guys currently, but everything he's done up to this point has been has been really good. I'm I'm excited about uh, the potential there for him. And you know, anytime that these guys get the pads on in training camp is when we really find a separator uh, for who ends up taking a tackle spot. But um, I've been I've been pleased with where he's at. Is that from the injury last year? He's still rehabbing. Can, can you say anything on that? No, I'll just okay. let that one be. Yeah. Yeah, I know we're only a couple of weeks removed from rookie minicamp, but how has J.C. kind of, and all the rookies, but maybe him in particular, kind of progressed here over the first couple of weeks? Yes, yeah, the best way to put it, they've progressed. Um, there's a lot. I mean, they come in, you know, eight or nine weeks into an offseason program. Uh, we have a lot of offense in. Uh, there's a lot of things that have been taught that they're catching up on. Uh, they get plenty of time in their meetings to catch up. Uh, in the afternoons, they have extra meetings as well. So there's just a lot on their plates. Uh, it's a challenge for rookies uh, to catch up. I, I, I tell guys all the time that uh, it's going to take you probably about to a training camp to feel like your feet are back underneath you again. And there's going to be some confidence that, that happens. Um, don't, don't lose it. You're going to have bad, you're going to have down days. It's going to be hard. Um, I think I've heard guys explain that, they, you know, as, as the rookies, as they're going down the tunnel, they start to see the light as the end of OTAs start. And I've, you know, you tell them sometimes that's just the train coming for the second round. Um, so there's a lot to, there's a lot that has to go on, but it's a process that, that we have plenty of time to get, uh, Straight away by the time we get to play, but it, there's a lot on those guys' plate right now. Yeah, when it comes to Will Levis, just building that trust and chemistry with a lot of veteran receivers that are here, how, how do you see that going about here, and what have you seen early on from him? Um, I've seen Will's done a really nice job, and I think that having the veteran guys, if you watch, I, I just I watched Calvin and I watched Tyler today, even. Um, you know, just their, their natural inclinations to go up and talk about something, um, go talk about a route, go talk about an adjustment, um, where that, that doesn't fall on Will to have to do to the receivers. They sort of help with their experience with him, uh, sharing perspective, sharing a thought process on, on any number of things that involves the, the pass pattern, the route technique. Um, those guys have a great feel and understand football as good as anybody. And so it falls less on Will to make corrections as it is to those guys uh, having conversations, which I think is a huge benefit for a young quarterback to have those guys. Um, how's Devondre yeah. still coming along? He's been great. He's been great. I mean, he's been plenty of work. He falls in the same boat as all the rookies do. You know, he's going to make plenty of mistakes. And um, But everything those guys have done, he's put the work in. He's done a nice job in the meeting room and translating things to the field. So um, that part's been exciting. Were you having some of it? Yes. Tony and uh, Ty J have such similar skill sets. From what you've seen of them so far, how do they distinguish themselves from one another? Um, that's a good question. I, I think Tajay's got um, a little bit a, a different route running ability, where and Tony's got a, he's a smoother runner. They're both really explosive. Um, those guys are the ones I'm probably of all the of all the groups that we have. I think those guys are the ones that are the most exciting for me. Just all the different places you can put those guys in the formation, all the different ways you can get them the ball uh, in the screen game in the passing game. Um, really, really excited about what they've shown so far. Those guys um, uh, are two really fantastic players. I'm, I'm happy we have those guys. Bullock, who's a pretty good leadership linebacker yeah. for this organization, kind of said on social media after Cedric was drafted and we made such a big deal out of the green dot stuff that he surprised the green dot has exploded into such a big sure. conversation. Are, are we making a bigger deal of that than it deserves to be? Probably a little bit, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm more in his boat than I am um, not. I think he makes a good point. There's... You know, there is a communication factor that matters. Um, there's an ability to uh, be able to call the defense and still get lined up and, and play your responsibility. Um, but ultimately, you find someone that's capable. I mean, every every team's got a green dot that you find one. 
uh, at some point that could communicate the call and, and get everybody lined up. Um, but the communication part on defense really is an 11-person job. I mean, all those guys have to talk. The safeties and corners are talking to each other the whole time. The linebackers in the front, the safeties and the backers. There's a ton of communication that goes on. So uh, to put it all on one person, I think, is, is probably unfair. Um, at the end of the day, but you still have to have a guy that can handle the information, the communication part. There's a personality part of that too, that they're naturally able to, to be in front of guys and communicate. But um, it's not something that I spend a ton of time thinking about. Uh, if for some reason we get to training camp and we can't get a call out, then then we can make it a big deal. But uh, at this point, no, I don't I don't have any uh, real concerns. I know he's used to getting a lot of catches. He mm -hmm. got a lot of targets last year too. Is it an adjustment for him now that you've got like three veteran, you know, top level receivers? Do you have to? Uh... Yeah, that, you have to ask him. You know, I, I don't know that. Uh, all all these guys all want the ball. That's a great problem to have. Um, and if we got three guys that can go win, then that's fantastic. Uh, what I will say is that even right now, you know, we're so we're so focused on teaching the system. And as we get into the game planning process, where we're trying to make sure we scheme touches up for guys and put them in position to make plays, uh, right now they're pretty. It's pretty kind of cookie cutter what the offense is and we'll start to game plan when we get there but um, it should afford a lot of opportunities um, a lot of less a lot less double coverage a lot less cloud because um, you have to you have to cover all the guys in the offense and that's the idea on a good offense that you stress the defense is where do they deploy their resource how do they how do they stop whatever player they think is going to be most productive sometimes it's by situation uh, third downs red zones however that works out um, but I think we have enough guys to put a lot of stress on a defense and when when guys are patient and the, the, the ball comes to him, um, it generally just happens that way. So uh, how he feels about it, you'd have to ask him. But I think it's a, it's a benefit for us offensively to have three guys that can uh, at the receiver spot that can cause problems. How are you command practice right now? I mean, are you more mainly focused on the offense and address everything else afterwards, or do you have to keep an eye on? I keep an eye on, on all of it. Uh, I'm definitely more focused on the offensive side as it is um, because I'm I'm. I'm running that system, if you will, so there's a lot more focus there. But I spend time watching the defense. I make sure I get with Denard every day, and we watch the tape. So um, I got a pretty good feel for what's going on over there. And at the end of the day, I trust those guys to, to work. I mean, those, those are veteran coaches on the defensive side, and um, they know what they want and how they want it. So uh, I let them do their job, and I make sure I'm on top of what's happening there too. But um, I, I definitely focus heavier on the offense right now. How are guys going about bringing Caleb to a point where he can get on the field and be effective? Yeah, I think our, our training our training staff's done a great job uh, uh, with between Todd and, and Matt, um, knowing when to push him, knowing when to back him off. I mean, that's a pretty significant uh, amount of injuries that he's had that um, he's trying to come back from, and uh, he's done a really nice job. He communicates really well with with how he feels. Uh, we listen to him and, and what his body tells him, and then uh, when our trainers push him, they push him to go. And um, I think he's done a nice job, and that's hard to it's it's hard to overcome a lot of the things that he's had to overcome. So. Um, you know, I'm proud of the fact that he keeps working at it. I mean, this what might have shut a lot of guys down. And the fact that he keeps coming out, keeps trying to play, uh, keeps rehabbing is, is really impressive. So um, we manage it the best we can uh, with a lot of input from, from the performance side and the training room um, and hopefully get him to a place where he can help us. Ron, how important is it that um, Denard Wilson is participating in the coaches' incubator program? Uh, that's a huge deal, man. That's a, that, the league's really done a nice job um, providing opportunities for guys um, – minority coaches to get in front of GMs and owners and, and help them prepare for the interview process. Um, because I can't tell you how many times I've, I've talked to people on the league and the interview process is, is a critical part if you want a chance to have uh, an opportunity to be a head coach. And the preparation sometimes isn't, isn't what it needs to be. And so given those opportunities, uh, people that do interviews, that have interviewed, that have hired, uh, really do a great job. And then the networking part of it, connecting with, with other uh, guys, offense and defense, connecting with GMs, getting a chance to sit down with owners. That's a huge, huge deal to be able to sit down with ownership. Um, so really happy Denard's got that, uh, that opportunity to do that. Um, he's, he's definitely uh, qualified and uh, the type of guy that you would hope would get the opportunities that I, I think could come his way. And um, it's, it's a great for his career and his opportunity. And I'm, I'm glad the league does it. Uh, happy it's here in Nashville so he can get back and forth and I don't lose him for too many days. But um, it's a really cool opportunity for him and, and the guys that participate in that. Uh, it's, it's awesome. So in terms of creating mismatches, how much can a guy like Josh Wiley with his size be a problem for defenses, especially down the scene? Yeah, quite a bit. I mean, Josh has Josh really put together a, a nice 
first off season, you know, really as a pro, obviously your first year coming out as a rookie is hard. Tight end's a hard position to contribute to immediately. Um, it takes some time. There's a lot of nuance. There's pass game, there's run game. There's a lot to it. Um, he's really done a nice job taking that step and growth in the second year. And he's big and he can, he's got a large catch radius and he can run. Um, and so those guys are, are fun tools to have. And he keeps progressing. Um, I'm really excited about what he could bring for us. He's done a really nice job. It just feel good to get out here and start to play football game. You know, I've been working out, training, you know, but I've been a free agent and just trying to find my way, you know, trying to figure out what team out that fit me the most and where I'm most comfortable with. You know, obviously, Callahan is here. You know, that's my guy, and he's a he's a heck of a coach, man. That's why he, he's here, you know, and just, just being able to fit in our schemes, which I do well. You know, I've been a part of this offense for a while now, fifth, sixth year, you know, so I just, just felt like it was it was the right fit. I feel like the difference Callahan, head coach, and Brian Callahan, offensive coordinator. Uh, I didn't, I didn't get the weigh in on that yet since this is my first day, you know. But to me, he's he been smooth so far, you know. I think he kind of been the same as he was in Cincy on the carryover to here, you know. He's everybody likes him already, you know. He's a, he's a players coach. He's a, he's a real chill guy, you know. And um, I think a lot of guys gonna be able to relate to him. And, and like I said, man, he he knows his stuff, you know. He know how to he know how to win, and 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 he know how to uh, score points. Yeah, um, see, Calvin, I, I've been new about new Calvin, you know, throughout the league and also hot, but I've been around uh, really a few times, you know, and also hot, but I haven't really hung with them like that, you know, since we wasn't on the, the same team. But those two great, great players, man, and uh, well, de well deserving of, of their accomplishments and what they do. And, man, I mean, I, I can learn from them guys and, and they can learn from me, you know, and just having that trio of us, you know, is going to just make this whole offense even more deadly, you know, as you just got to kind of lock in with the chemistry with the quarterback, you know, Levis, you know, he, he's a great talented guy as well. You know, still got to experience, get more experience in the offense, but I think he has what it takes to, 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 to take this offense to where it should be. You, you've been a part of really good trios before, and now you come here and this is another one. Like how much having that much talent in the room, how much can you guys really push each other to the next level? Yeah, um, a lot, man, you know, because as long as we can all feed off each other and just compliment each other, I think that's what's going to take us to that level, you know, because we, we all know, we, we all can play, you know, it's just how do we compliment each other? How well can we do things off of each other? How can I, I, I help really get open? How can I drag the nickel down and then help him, free him up to get open? You know, so at that point, it's just a lot of complimentary football, you know, because those, like I said, those guys are, are heck of a talent, you know, and, and myself as well, you know, so I'm, we just got to do just a good job of just locking in, knowing the scheme of the offense and just being detailed. And I think just with that being said, the confidence level will just take us to the highest level. Did you get a sense of Will Levis talked, I think, a couple weeks ago about how excited he was that you were coming here because he can watch the tape and, you know, watch me. Did you get that sense of excitement if you talked to him a lot about the offense? Uh, not yet, but I did see him talk about it. You know, I think it, it allows him to play more freely and more comfortable because he know that I know the offense. He know that I will be – uh, in positions of the field where he expect me to be, you know, I, I might could have a route that's not where I should be, but I know that's where he want me to be, and it, I think it'll just help him, you know, progress through, uh, through, through, through his progression, you know, and, and just, just, I just got to know his brain, you know, I just got to know his brain, and he know mine. If, if I know he expect me to be three more yards from the hash, I'm a beater. I'm all kind of, we kind of, it's kind of a psychic thing, you know, but that's just based off of the experience of the offense, you know. So I think that'll just uh, help him as well. Tyler, but what are your impressions of Will in just in terms of how he commands things and maybe just how he carries himself out there? Yeah, I mean, the quarterback is definitely the hardest position on the field by far, you know, and it's, it's a lot to know, a lot to learn, especially coming off of a one offense and then coming to a whole nother offense, you know, it kind of could deteriorate your, your confidence. And uh, I didn't really see that, you know, he took good command. I know he's not as polished as everybody would want to know, would want to see, but we just started, you know, this, this is my first day, you know, I kind of messed up on a, on a play here and there, but I'm um, kind of familiar with it, but uh, just, just the way he go out there and just go about business, man, he just, at the end of the day, it's all about the confidence level. If you got the confidence to go out there and just know your assignment, know what you're doing and even help guys know what they're doing, you know, that, that, that'll help excel the offense as well. In your experience, how long does it usually take to develop that psychic link with a guy? Uh, it takes some time. It takes some time, but I think with him, it, it it'll be a little faster because I'm already comfortable in the offense. I already know it. I already know what where where to be in certain plays or, or where I think that he would expect me to be at the time, you know. But I think 
or I can kind of rush through that process than what I did when I was in Cincy with, with Burrow, you know, because we was both kind of learning together and uh, he was he was still a young player, a rookie as well. But yeah, I, I think I, I think it helped him a lot with me being here. Worked with Cheeto, I guess, in practice in Cincy, and how cool is it now you guys are back doing the same thing here? Yeah, it's kind of ir- ir- ironic that we're both from Cincy. We both know the the, the scheme and how practice is going to go, and he kind of he kind of knows what we're running sometimes based on on our splits because he's seen it thousands of times, you know. And uh, we just 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 have fun doing it, man. At the end of the day, that's going to make us better because you got a guy out there that that's used to run, running the plays, and if you can beat him doing what you think he already knows, I mean, it, it ain't doing nothing but better than us, you know? So I think that's a good thing uh, to have that over there going against uh, a guy that's kind of familiar with, with the scheme of the office, you know? Because once we get out there and play against other guys who's not used to seeing it, it's second nature. It's just, it's, it, it just feels supernatural and easy. You were talking about making yourself better as a wide receiver, and now you got Snead on your side here in Tennessee. I know it was not here today, but how is it going to be to just go up against that type of competition? Yeah, uh, Snead is probably one of the best right now in the league. You know, that's why they paid him, and that's why um, uh, they, they, they wanted him here. You know, and I always looked at him as one of the top guys, you know, because, you know, we had to go against some guys, you know, throughout my career at the Chiefs, you know, and he's one of them type guys that you kind of you kind of got a, a game plan around. He, he's not a guy that you can just go out there and sugarcoat around with and just think you're going to just win because because you know what your job is and you just think you're better than him. But uh, it's a lot different not go out there, man. It ain't really too much one on one. It's kind of you, you're kind of headed in uh, the, the the scheme of the defense. So you gotta kind of gotta be on the right page with the quarterback and just 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 when 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 you got top tier competition. In your opinion, uh, what makes the slot receiver position so unique, and how have you kind of found your niche there? Uh, I think it's for me. It's a lot of the feel, you know, just the question he asked with Will Levis and how he expect me where I'm, where I should be, where he expect me, and it's just uh, like, it, like in this offense, you got, you kind of have, you got to have that guy that I know how to utilize through coverage in different zones, because because they throw a lot of two high, one high, and they they kind of uh, try to mess you up and kind of give you a false tell and things like that. So like. I got real good intel, and I kind of always see the coverage roll. And, and, and if I got to run a certain route in two high, I got to do it a different way than if I have to run it if it was just one high. You know, So you need a guy that, that can always know exactly how to run a specific route in each coverage, because you can't just in a slot just go out there and just run the route on paper. You know, Sometimes it'll change up. Sometimes you might have a, a snag, a slant out. But if it's free space, you just sit there, I'm ready for the ball. You know, So you got to kind of just have that feel when you're in the slot. Uh, it's definitely weird. You know, I've been with Cincy eight years. It's my ninth year. And just just having a different uni on, man, it's it's new beginnings. You know, I don't look at it like it might be hard or I gotta readapt. You know, I'm 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 kinda older, I'm I'm a vet, I, I kinda know what to expect. You know, I'm I'm a good person outside of the football. You know, I feel like guys can gravitate around me and I can help guys get better, you know, and just just being around guys that I've been with, like Callahan and and Colton, he's the he's the uh special teams guy, that's my guy as well. And um just just feeling comfortable in the environment. You know, these guys around here is all cool and the coaching staff it just it just just feel right, you know, just just felt right. So at the end of the day, I mean, there's new legacies everywhere. You been here before? I've been here once, but never. I didn't really get to browse around. So, I mean, I'll, I'll get to there at some point. How did Last process work for you? Because obviously you signed later. Was there additional interest? And then you guys just continued to touch base. And how did that work out with Rand and Coach Callahan? Yeah, uh, I, I mean, I, I knew they was always interested from the beginning. You know, knowing that Callahan came and just having a guy that knows the system. You know, and I can come out here and help guys, but uh, it just didn't kind of work out in the beginning for me. But I always knew that that was a, a favorable team that I would want to be a part of because of him and, and the system. I know it real well, and I mean, we just stayed in touch. You know, I came on a visit and then um, weighed out my options and just going to facility to, to facility. It just every, everywhere I went was was cool and fine. It felt good, but this just felt like home to me. You know, because I had I got guys around, and you know, um, I mean, it's just, it's just that feeling you get. You know, when something just feel right. Can't really explain it, but like they, they they were always one of my top contending teams that I wanted to be a part of if it was all said and done. Have you got a sense of how much Callahan spun off of the Cincinnati playbook? How much this is different than, than what you did in Cincinnati? I mean, pretty much the same for me. 
you know, it may be a couple of different uh, terminology of words that we didn't use in Cincy, you know, but um, for the most part, it's kind of simple for me. You know, I kind of know my job. I kind of know what he expects out of me going out there and doing my job. So for me, it's just polishing up and refreshing my memory and just, just getting out there and actually running the plays and just, you know, because working out outside of the field is a lot different than getting with the team and you actually running the plays and you just, you know, uh, being a part of the, the, the full unit. Terrible. I'm excited, I guess, are you, about the addition to the, at the wide receiver position? And, and how do you think maybe having two other top quality guys like that might, might benefit you? Um, I think this is one of the best wide receiver groups I've had a chance to play with on paper. So, uh, obviously, you know, I can come up here and say a bunch, but we haven't played a game yet. So, uh, you know, we'll see how, how it goes once we, uh, once we hit the field. What's that going to take to turn success on paper into success on uh, Sunday? Let's take it day by day. Tyler Boyd's been in been his program for a while. Uh, you know, just, just taking it day by day. A lot of us are still learning. Uh, you know how how things go. So just coming out practicing. I know it's still very early in the process, but uh, I guess maybe what strides from last year will to uh, will now in the you know, games is that's kind of your next season. Uh, you said what strides? Yeah, just like maybe his mentality, his approach is more vocal. Like what differences are? Uh, yeah. I mean, Will was always vocal. Will was always Will. You know, I don't. I hope he doesn't change who he is. You know, you seen last year, you know, him and I had a miscommunication. Uh, you know, he he came and said something to me. So, uh, you know, I love that. I told him, continue to, to be that, that quarterback, be that person, don't change who you are. So, uh, you know, Will is, is, is always Will. It's, it's up to us to go out and help him, uh, you know, be the best quarterback he can be, though. Brandon had mentioned uh, how a couple of years ago that you were working with Calvin in uh, Arizona. You guys were still on each other's tricks and things like that. Having him here day to day, like how much can that push you to take your game to the next level? You guys just push each other. Uh, I'm always competing. You know, anytime we get anyone who uh, who's the number one receiver, my mindset is to go out and uh, you know out compete them, out do them. Uh, you know, I've always had that mindset. Kobe Bryant being my my favorite athlete of all time. Uh, anytime I get a chance to compete against anyone, uh, you know, I'm. I'm trying to outcompete them. I'm trying to outdo them, and it's only going to make the team better. What were your early? Imp- what were the early impressions of just Callahan's scheme? How you fit in this offense? Uh, you know, uh, I've, I've watched him from afar. Been a fan from afar. I remember those guys. Um, you know, went to went to the Super Bowl game. Uh, and T. Higgins, one of my one of my favorite players to watch, uh, and Jamar Chase. So uh, you know, I was watching those guys and what they did out there. Uh, you know, and I feel like you know we can we can definitely uh, replicate you know some of those things here, but. Um, you know, I've, I've always been a fan of that offense from afar. They brought in a good set of corners too, Snead, Woozy, to go with Roger. How much can the receiver corner battles in practice uh, help everybody improve and get better? Oh, I think it, it's, it's going to make everyone better. Uh, you know, I've never played against Snead or uh, Woozy, so looking forward to it. Uh, some of the guys have already and told me some things about them, but you can tell that they, they, they like to compete. Even in walk through the way that they, uh, you know, take everything serious. Uh, so you know, hopefully, we can get some good competition in the summer. Yeah, we seen you live last year. How much can help you to be with the team all the way through this off season? How much should maybe put you ahead of game heading the season? Uh, you know, this is an offense that you know I, I've never played in. Uh, there's there's a lot of you know things that I could could do to to help this offense. So uh, you know, just trying to execute uh, and be perfect. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a perfectionist, so uh, I've, I've definitely made some mistakes already. And just coming and, uh, you know, next day, not, not making those mistakes. It seems like you spent a lot of time in Nashville during the offseason. How did that help you? What was your favorite event that you went to during the time? Uh, my favorite event so far that I've been to is uh, probably Morgan Wallen's concert. Uh, it was amazing just to, you know, see the atmosphere, uh, see the love that he has in his town. Uh, it was dope. How did that come together? Uh, you know. Morgan being one of my friends. How was that like coming down the tunnel, the hype kind of leading up to that as you let him out there? That was cool. Uh, you know, maybe too much bourbon before, but it was cool. <laughs> How are your uh, DJ skills the other day? Pardon me? How are your DJ skills the other day? Oh, man, you would have had to be there. <laughs> What's Brian's coaching personality like? Uh, man, he, you know, he's, he's serious. 
Uh, but he's also relatable to the players. So, uh, you know, that's all you can ask for. He's had systems that have had three really top-level receivers, and they've all been very productive. Does that make you confident that maybe the same could, could occur here? Uh, no player is the same, but obviously he knows how to get the best out of those players, and I'm sure he's going to do the same with us. Tyler told us Callahan knows how to win and how to score points. How have you seen that manifest in the system, even though it's early? Uh, I think the first day that they put an offense, we had a double move, which uh, is probably the first time since I've been playing football. Uh, the first day, you know, we've had some kind of you know intricacy in the offense like that, which is uh, cool to see. Does it help team camaraderie that a lot, like Will seem to spend a lot of time here in the offseason. You've been here a lot. How much does it help team camaraderie when you guys are all in the same place like that? Oh, it, it, tremendously. Uh, you know, we have to be on the same page with Will. We have to know what he's thinking, what he's doing, and uh, be able to take his criticism and him be able to take our criticism. But, uh, you know, that doesn't happen just on the field. You have to build that bond. How important is that, just being up front to be able to build that trust as teammates and as coaches? You said how, oh, sorry, how important is the ability to just be up front with one another as teammates and, and coaches with you guys and you be able to be up front with coaches? How important is that to building trust as a team? Oh, very important, very important. Uh, you know, it's, it's us. You know, we're not going to go out and, and, you know, get a whole new team or a whole new coaching staff. So, uh, you know, we have to trust each other. We have to make it work. And uh, I think that's what we're doing right now. No, I don't need to talk to Traylon about anything. Traylon's a grown man, you know. He gets it. Are we sleeping on him a bit? Are we sleeping on him a bit? Outsiders looking at that group and the additions. I'm trying, trying to think I answer that without like a, a negative sound bite. Are we sleeping on Traylon? Mm -hmm. Nine means no in German. For you at this point in your career, there's so much, so much newness around here from the offense and the coaching staff, a lot of group personnel. Can that be energizing? Uh, of course, it can be energizing. Uh, of course. What, what are the possible looks uh, for, for Traylon this year, do you think? I mean, Traylon's one of the most athletic people I've ever played with. The guy's as big as he is and fast as he is. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to see uh, what he does this year. How much you communicating with, the, with some of your uh, rookies, especially the big guys, Sweat and Latham, and what have maybe been their impressions? Uh, those, those guys are, are ready to go. You see them in the locker room. Uh, you see how they're, they're communicating, not just with the offensive line, but with everyone. Uh, you know, I think we're doing a good job also of just you know, letting them know that you know, man, we're you know, we're not just your teammates, but we, we're your brothers as well. And I think that's important for a rookie. Did you do any talent this offseason in terms of your routine or just getting ready for this period? So we're uh, seeing as a, in the normal way. More, more yoga, I would say. More hot yoga. Uh, that's about it. The offensive talent goes obviously beyond the wide receiver room. We talked to Tony Pollard about just who he's working with now. What would you say about Pollard and now Spears in that backfield? Two, two of my favorite running backs. Uh, I was a fan of Pollard. I trained with Pollard in Dallas this year. And, uh, you know, Spears is like my little brother. So I'm looking forward to what those two can do. Uh, and I think they're going to surprise a lot of people. Thanks. Appreciate it, Hopkins. Thanks, Hopkins. How different is this defense so far in the early stages from what you guys have run over the last four or five years? Um, I'll just say, it's, you know, a lot more, you know, aggressive. Um, that's kind of what the theme was coming in before we even got uh, Coach Denard here. Um, and so far, you know, that's what it's been. It's been aggressive, but also, you know, there's times when you can be aggressive and times when not to, and, you know, our coaches are doing a good job of, of teaching that. How do you like working you know, with, you talk about aggressive? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, just watching him, you know, what they did at the Ravens this past year, um, they, were, they were very successful as a defense, um, especially in the back end. Um, one of my good friends of Geno Stone, who I played with, um, he talked and raved about you know, his experience with Denard this past year. So, um, so far, it's been amazing. What do you think about the group of receivers that's been assembled here and maybe how much of that helped the defense uh, as, as competes with these guys? Um, we got you know, guys that are professionals, been in the league, and made plays for you know, their respective teams that, teams that they've been on. Um, it's just, just going to help us out. Um, you got Tyler Boyd, Calvin, um, D Hop, and then Traylon out there. I mean, those are some tough receivers to line up against um, day in and day out. Just something uh, different having a, a secondary guy as a defensive coordinator. A little, a little different for you on how much you're looking forward to maybe what his expertise 
Yeah, um, I mean, I'm looking forward to the knowledge that he has in the game. Um, he played the game. Um, he has experience of coaching and playing. Same with uh, Coach Harris and Coach Jackson. Um, I got three D guys that played, you know, pr professional football in the same similar position I was in at a high level, and now they're able to coach it, which makes a lot of guys in the room feel good about what they're saying. Well, you stepped up a lot as a leader on the defense last year. How do you describe the level of ownership you take as everyone's kind of learning and moving through OTA? Yeah, I mean, it's all about accountability um, with me as well. I mean, this is all new for me. It's new, new style, new defense, new scheme. So, you know, just like everyone else is learning, you know, I'm, I'm doing the same thing. But my job is to make sure that everyone, you know, learns at a, a progressive level and that we're doing it together as a unit. If you look back at your 2023, what did you like? Maybe what are some of the areas you think you got to improve on? Um, I think improving on just having ball disruption, getting my hands on the ball, whether that's interceptions, pass breakups, forced fumbles. Um, but overall, just you know, being the best overall safety I can be. Um, I know I have a, a long road to get there, and I know that my capabilities are are there. And I just have to you know improve this off season and help my guys around me, and, and they'll help me. Have you heard from KB about the week one matchup already? Uh, I haven't heard from KB. I saw his tweet, but I mean, he already knows. He probably right when he saw it. We're probably thinking the same thing, so I didn't, nothing needs to be said. In terms of the secondary as a whole, what do you think about the additions with the two corners and just overall how that makes that whole entire back? Yeah, I mean, we got two dogs. You got Cheeto and Snead out there. Uh, I can't wait to go full speed with them with the pads on. Um, but, you know, I've been watching them make plays for the other team against us. And so I'm excited that they're on our team now, and it's going to be really fun to be, be spinning back there. Yeah. You mentioned that, uh, that, that Weddle had the green dot once upon a time. You heard from you pretty quickly about mm -hmm. uh, your desire to have the green dot and ask yeah. him what you could do to get it. Uh, what did he tell you about that? How much would you like to have? I mean, whatever I can do to help the team win. Um, I'm, you know, I'm just a competitive guy. You know, I feel like when if I'm out there, you know, I'm, I'm the quarterback of the defense. Even if I have the green dot or not, I'm going to be communicating, you know, and leading the defense the best as I can. So, I mean, if it happens, it doesn't. I mean, I'm going to still be the same me. You mentioned uh, Snead and like those two guys, they have conversations with the line of scrimmage. You know, if you was a safety and the aggressiveness, like how much does that help you better be able to do the job? It's just trust. You know, I'm trying being able to trust that, you know, these guys have proven that they can be in the right position and make the plays. And, you know, when I'm out there, I'm able to do my job now and, you know, start searching for a little plays as they come to me. But knowing you got guys that are aggressive out there, it makes me as a, a safety want to be that same mentality that they have bringing to the bringing to our defense. As you guys put it all together now on the field, is there a different tone with this team given everything that's changed? And guys are just excited. You know, guys see opportunity. Whether you've been here or you're new here, it's opportunity out there for guys to, you know, make an impression on these coaches and be able to, you know, change their lives and change the lives of the family. Um, I mean, the transition at first, it feels like it's going to be different when you first walk in here, but once you get in here, I mean, it's just like anything else. Um, there's always change. Life is constantly changing. So, I mean, for us, if you want to be sticking around, you're going to have to change. So, I mean, it's kind of a mindset that you have to put in your head that, you know, if you're still going to be stuck in old ways, and that's not going to work here. So, I mean, like, for me, it's just find a way to figure out where your role is and where you can fit and just take it on that. You said, you said uh, aggressive, more mm -hmm. aggressive defense. Without giving away plays or things like that, can you give an idea of like, how? We might see more of this. Yeah, I'll just say guys are going to have better eyes. Guys are going to have better um, footwork, which, I mean, your eyes and your feet, if you have, if you just complete those things, they're, that the plays are going to come your way. That's a lot of the times where guys are looking back at the quarterback and the ball is coming and then they reach for the ball and they're just, you know, six, five inches shorter. But if, you know, if you drive your man with your eyes and your feet and you look back at the ball, it's probably going to be hitting your chest or your face. So um, just eyes and your feet, that's how you're going to be aggressive.